Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for August the 28th of 2020. Well, it is titled the Valley of Orion. So what do we see here? Well, we're actually looking at the Orion Nebula. And while this may not look like the Orion Nebula you're used to seeing, we see it in two different types of light. On the left hand side, we see visible light, so ordinary light that we are used to seeing the colors of the rainbow in red through violet. And on the right hand side, we are seeing it in infrared. So it's actually data from two different space telescopes put together. Hubble Space Telescope on the left seeing invisible light and the Spitzer Space Telescope looking in the infrared on the right hand side. Now we look at things in multiple types of light in order to get a more complete picture. If we only look at part of the spectrum, then we only get a partial picture. And that is what we did up until about 100 years ago or so when we were only looking at visible light. It wasn't until the 1930s that we first developed technology to be able to look at radio waves. And it wasn't until much later that we were able to observe the sky in other wavelengths such as infrared and ultraviolet, as a lot of that required telescopes that would be up above the atmosphere, because a lot of those wavelengths, things like ultraviolet, a lot of X rays and gamma rays are all absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. But now we can look at objects like the Orion Nebula across the spectrum and really get a complete look and a better understanding of what is going on there. Now we know that Orion is a great star forming regions and in fact at the center here is the young star cluster known as the trapezium. Trapezium is a very young star cluster only a few hundred thousand years old. So formed very very recently contains a few very massive stars towards the center. And those are the ones that dominate and actually cause the rest of the nebula to glow. It is those few very bright stars that actually energize and provide ultraviolet radiation that causes all of the gas in the nebula to, gl to glow and gives us the nebula that we see. If we got rid of those stars, the Orion Nebula would essentially disappear because the fainter stars that we see would not be powerful enough to energize this much material as we're seeing as we're seeing here. So it's a way that this uh, that these very bright stars, the very first ones to form, kind of energize the light from around them and help us to be able to see the nebula causing that gas to glow. Now what we're seeing here is actually just one frame of a video. And if you go to the website that I link to for the image, and look at the last link in their description, there is actually a video that you can go to and play that shows uh, flying through the great nebula of Orion. So a chance to fly through the Orion Nebula based on data gathered by these two great telescopes that have given us so much information and so many images that we're able to put them together and visualize what it might be like to fly through the Orion Nebula in 3D. So that was our picture of the day for August the 28th of 2020. It was titled The Valley of Orion. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture previewed to be light dark Mars. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.